Well, well that's, go. yeah, I guess that's, that's the trick, to find an interesting person to talk to to start with and then maybe ask them things that they're not usually asked, make them you know, think about their answer. You know, if, you're, if you've got a student who's got a particular interest that's outside of school, you know, make sure you've done a little bit of research on that so you're not asking silly questions. Don't ask the normal Dorothy Dix question. You might want to start with that you know, if you've got a reluctant speaker. Often in journalism you're interviewing people that really don't want to talk. You need to approach it in a friendly manner, you know, make them feel comfortable get them talking with a few questions and then you know maybe you've got a few more interesting questions down the track and save those you know for the halfway point of the interview yeah. it just depends on on the subject i guess if you're if you've got a very big story stories take different amounts of time i can remember doing things like a us um, flotilla would come into the harbor with 20 warships and we'd have three helicopters and 15 cameras on the ground so you're out there, you'll run, interview the, the captain and interview the dignitaries and interview the people waving their flags on the side and, and you, you might come back to the newsroom with three camera tapes including your piece to camera and the parts that you're going to put together. Mm. And then suddenly the other goes, well we've got all the, the tapes in there and there's 15 tapes all of half an hour long and it's now two o'clock in the afternoon and you've got to have the story on air at six o'clock. So, there are times where you've got a massive amount of shot, shot listing to do very quickly, yep. um, but then there are times where it might just be one take, you've done a quick interview, there's only so much vision, it's a very simple process, so it just depends on the story. Mm. But these days it's all you know, obviously put onto a server and one can access the, the material at the same time. Uh, okay. Question, I'm not sure is the honest answer. Uh, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing now, and if I can continue to do that, uh, that would be wonderful. It's very much dependent on um, ratings and success and all those sorts of things. So that's kids get a little bit older and a bit more independent. I'd love to be able to go out and maybe do some stories for Sunday night and, and a little bit of travel would be fantastic. So if I can keep doing that for the next uh, 10 years, that'd be great. Every day. So as long as they keep ticking along and you're, you're doing a good job and, and people enjoy the job you're doing, um, you're, uh, you can sort of you know, plan a long term future. Uh, yes, I guess um, my number one tip to you these days, while you're still at school, is to, if you're thinking about journalism, uh, is to really concentrate on, on your written subjects, your English, uh, read as much as you can, go that extra effort when you're writing an essay, um, you know, really strive for good marks, um, take on extra challenges if you can with written forms of work. And one of the big things with journalism is not just about, you know, once you've, you've got your story and your facts and you, you write beautifully, it's having the ability to go out and meet lots of people, different people, different walks of life under different circumstances, look them in the eye, shake their hand, um, talk to them, make chit chat, make small talk, because all those things are very important in, in the field of journalism. If you do get an opportunity to do some work experience in any field, and you are truly passionate about trying to get a career in that field, make the most of it. You know, don't sit there, get up on the front foot and, and really um, and make the most of it.